thanks for the introduction and also thank you very much for the invitation, Igor and Antonio. So it's a pleasure being here and I think it's a great opportunity to uh, participate in this workshop. Um, I'm going to present a data-driven control approach for non systems. I want to exploit Kuchmann operator theory to also derive stability guarantees for our non system. And um, that is not my own work, um, so it's joint work uh, with my colleague Julian Werberich and my PhD advisor Frank Algeber as well as uh, Manuel Schaller and Karl Wortmann. So the overview is that we start with an unknown nonlinear dynamical system, control system, and we want to design a controller such that we can deduce stability guarantees for that system. And if we would want to follow a classical approach, um, we would need to model nonlinear components because often we cannot neglect them. Um, so we have to do a system identification, but for nonlinear systems, this might be challenging. You need expert knowledge, it's time consuming, mm -hmm. and so on. And at the end, if you have a nonlinear system, uh, you often have to apply non-convex methods, so you're not guaranteed to end up at, at an optimum, um, or it's just expensive to solve. So instead, we um, want to formulate a data term characterization based on um, Kuchmann method, so we want to apply a, a variant of, X, F, of EDMD to formulate a bilinear surrogate model, and um, then exploit the structure of the Kuchmann operator, or more precisely the chosen uh, vector of observables we, we use, um, to derive proportional error bounds for the approximation <laughs> error. And here this proportionality is really crucial for the controller design because we want to exploit robust control techniques um, that exploit exactly the data driven characterization as well as the proportional error bound structure to then um, guarantee stability of the closed loop system um, when using this, this controller. So why is this even relevant looking at guarantees? Um, so if we have a nonlinear system and we look at the time evolution for over a short horizon and open loop, um, we all know that we can formulate a surrogate model where the accuracy is, is, is uh, kind of okay, right? We have a nice fit. We can even get that better, but it doesn't matter. So here we just apply EDMD, get an, um, a linear surrogate model, and the accuracy is, is perfect. Um, we can design then a, a surrogate a controller based on the surrogate model, so for example, linear quadratic regulator, um, such that the closed loop of our surrogate model with the LQR controller converges to the origin and everything is fine. So now the question is what happens if we apply that controller also to the true system. Um, and of course we've seen ex examples that this works um, often very well. However, if we don't do that carefully, um, it might be that the behavior of the closed loop system of a nonlinear system behaves very weirdly. So for example here, we get many oscillations, we're not converging to the origin and therefore we're not getting the uh, behavior we want to have. So um, we want to basically investigate how to close the loop um, in, a, in a guaranteed fashion such that the closed loop does what we want to. So we have a dynamical system, we assume a controller fine form here, um, we measure some data, we'll talk about what the data looks like in a second, um, and then want to learn a certified data driven surrogate model with a procedure, it's, it's a variant of EDMD, we call it safe EDMD because it gives guarantees. Um, and that model here is, is a bilinear structure. And um, then we can um, get a controller which guarantees stability in, a, in a, a specific region, which we call the safe operating region, because there we can safely, safely apply our controller and a guarantee that the nonlinear system um, behaves as, uh, as expected. We are, of course, not the first ones uh, looking into control and, and Kuchmann. So there's this nice collection of results, of course, um, in, in, in this book. But there are also many other uh, results looking into data driven approximations of controlled systems, um, as well as um, Kuchmann control um, based on a surrogate model and also approximation error characterizations. So this list is uh, quite, um, <laughs> quite much, but also, of course, not complete. Um, but there are many works. So, so um, you could ask what, what is now our, our um, contribution to that. And in particular, we want to use all, kind of all these results and um, derive an error approximation tailored for control. What does that mean? We want to answer the question how we can use Kuchmann theory for reliable data-driven control design. And the proposed solution is, as already said, we want to come up with a data-driven surrogate model with the proportional error bounds and then design a controller design um, with disability guarantees. Okay, so um, matching the goals, we first derive the surrogate model then designing controller, and I'll show you some examples before concluding the talk. Okay, so first of all, we want to use some EDMD variant to come up with the data-driven surrogate model. 
And um, since we look into continuous time systems, because that's a natural uh, representation of a system coming from, from physical modeling, um, we often have the drawback if we want to rely on the generator setting that we have to measure state derivative data, which is of course restrictive uh, in practice. So um, instead, we first sample um, the system to get a discretized version. So we uh, do a zero audible where we have piecewise, continue, uh, piecewise constant control inputs over the sampling um, intervals, which are denoted by delta t. And then we get this, this discretized, discretized system and we can characterize the Kupman action based on this discretized system. Uh, description uh, where we have the script, uh, the script k um, shifting forward by delta t for the constant input uk over this interval. And let me know if we apply it to the observable and evaluate at xk, uh, we end up with uh, the observable evaluated at the next um, discrete time point of the state. Um, how do we want to do that? Because the Kupman operator, of course, if we want to apply it, we have to approximate it somehow. Um, so we want to, or we need to restrict ourselves to a finite um, dimensional subspace. And um, to this end, we um, define a vector of observables we're going to consider, where we include the constant observable one and um, the state itself. And then we add up some um, additional uh, functions, which need to be zero at zero, such that, that phi hat of x is zero. And we need some smoothness, but um, um, that's not too important for now. And then if we, um, yeah, we, we define a dictionary as just the span of those functions. And then the notation is that if we restrict ourselves um, to the dictionary and also project back to the dictionary such that we stay on the dictionary, uh, that's then the K delta T U. And so the, just the matrix compression of the coupon operator. So what does this, um, this uh, structure of this dictionary give us? So the, the, the cool thing is that due to this constant, um, due to this uh, constant observable one, we know that um, the first row also needs to be uh, one zero here because um, the observable is, is, is for all times one, the first one. So uh, we also know that independently of, of x, we need to ensure that we stay at one. So therefore, we get this um, this first row for any constant u. So uh, in particular, also for uh, u equal to zero and u equal to one. Um, and we even know more because um, if we if we just substitute u equal to, to zero for all times. We know that the, the corresponding nonlinear dynamics is just the um, x dot equal to f of x. And since we want to stabilize uh, the origin, um, we also know that f of 0 needs to be 0. So if we um, work things out, we directly see that um, the um, operator corresponding to u equal to 0 applied to the observable vector of observables and uh, evaluated at 0, we know that we get um, 1, 0, so just the observable at zero, and if, do, if we do the same for the matrix compression, uh, we directly see that we end up with this vector in matching terms, we know um, that the lower left block here needs to be zero. So we know the first row has a special structure, and we also know that for u equal to zero, um, the corresponding um, structure, there's, there's additional, an additional zero, and we have this uh, diagonal structure here. We'll see in a second why that's helpful. So um, to now also um, use data and to, to, to put the data into the game, um, we need to parameterize the data term in our approximation. And we um, here exactly do it um, as seen before. So our data term uh, surrogate um, needs to satisfy the structure that for u equal to 0, we have this, this additional 0 here in the, the um, corresponding row of 1, 0. And the same for u equal to 1, where we also have this 1, 0 structure. The overall um, Kupman operator for arbitrary constant inputs is then parameterized in this uh, controller fine form. And we just add um, um, the data driven surrogates for u equal to 0, u equal to 1 in that, in that fashion. Uh, we sample data IID from a compact uh, region uh, for u equal to 0 and u equal to 1 independently, uh, where we basically have, have data pairs, d data pairs each. Um, so not from one trajectory, but just basically state itself in the successor state um, for, as I said, both uh, u equal to 0 and u equal to 1. And then we uh, basically solve the linear regression course, I mean, inspired by EDMD, where we just match this, this least squares problem to get the remaining unknown matrices A, B0, and B1. 
So then we can basically characterize our data-driven surrogate model um, by having the, the dynamics in phi hat of x, and here we, we basically kick out the constant observables that shape we know that phi hat, phi hat of x is zero for x equal to zero, um, which will be then handy for the controller design, um, where we end up with this approximately bilinear representation. So that's of course only an approximation, um, which has several sources. So first of all, we assume this controller fine form here of the, for the operator. We know that this control affinity is indeed preserved for the generator, but not for the operator. Um, so we make some approximation here. Uh, we also, of course, only learn from finitely many data. So we also have an approximation error here. And then we also have a projection error because the dictionary we chose uh, is, of course, well, typically not invariant. So we have to account for that. But um, the surrogate model itself is kind of easy to obtain. We just have to solve this uh, linear regression problem here. So now let's look um, onto proportional error bonds, which I've already promised. Um, all right, so here uh, we have a result on this. Uh, so we, we first look into the sampling error, course, consisting of the, the bilinearization or the control affinity of the Koopman operator as well as the data approximation. And here, um, for, under, for, for a given tolerance delta, some amount of data in the sampling rate, um, we can prove that there exist constants, dx and, and cu bar such that if um, we have more data than the, the zero and we are in our compact region from which we've sampled, then the sampling error satisfies this proportional uh, norm bound. And here in particular, so that's the, the Koopman operator action restricted to the dictionary and our data driven um, surrogate. And um, on the right hand side, this term vanishes for x equal to zero and this term vanishes for u equal to zero. We see that those constants here um, scale in a, in, a, in a proper way. So if the sampling rate goes to zero um, and you have infinitely many data, then this, this error goes to zero and the right-hand side vanishes. So we can basically um, get this bound arbitrarily small for enough data and small enough sampling rate. And um, we can prove this in, in two steps. So basically that consists of two errors now, the bilinear approximation will be and the proof exploit with well affinity of the Koopman um, generator, and then for the matrix compression, uh, you basically a Taylor a, a, a Taylor expansion of um, of using that the operator then is just the um, exponential of the uh, generator, um, and then by looking at the remainder we get the delta t squared, and for the surrogate we exploit a bound on the norm of uh, the matrix compression of the Koopman action minus our data term uh, surrogate, where we then if we if we basically act it on our observable function, we can work out the proportional bound uh, based on exploiting again the structure of phi of x, including um, the constant observable one. Um, we have also the additional error source, namely the projection error. And um, here, if we have a proportional bound in our projection error as well, then we also basically can just stack every, just, um, put everything together and um, say that the overall approximation error coming from bilinear approximation, data driven approximation, and the projection error is proportionally bounded as well, where those constants Cx, Cu now are just the sum of the proportional error bound from the previous slide and the proportional error bound for the projection error. And based on that, we <coughs> have basically a fully proportional characterization of the error. So our learning arch architecture leads to a bilinear dynamics um, in terms of the uh, reduced observable vector phi hat of x, where now this equality holds because we add here the uncertainty, so we have some remainder term which we have not modeled yet, and um, this term is bounded via this proportional bound, and uh, to get this in a more, um, more handy fashion, we exploit that this norm is just the norm of phi hat of x because we basically just kick out the constant observable uh, resulting from phi hat of zero. Um, as already said, the constant Cx and Cu bar coming from um, all errors besides the projection error can be made arbitrarily small um, by small enough sampling rate and large enough um, data. And uh, the right-hand side vanishes if we um, are at x u equal to zero, which, our, which is our desired controlled equilibrium. Um, and that's very crucial for robust state feedback controller design, which we'll investigate um, in the following. Okay, um, that gives us a data-driven characterization, which we can use for, for um, 
safety plate controller design, uh, which we want to look uh, into now, and uh, we want to exploit robust control techniques. So, um, <coughs> so overall structure, once again, we start with the continuous time um, system where we have some data samples, no derivative data, we lift it to the coupon space, we bilinearize it, and then get our surrogate model, where we now want to basically design based on that a feedback um, stabilizing our nonlinear system. And the goal is to apply linear uh, robust control theory because if we, I don't know, go for example to some of squares, things explode quite fast because of the dimension. Um, and starting with this, um, the surrogate model, we see that um, this remainder term is already handled, so we have um, the, the bound on this, on this remainder in the proportional fashion. Uh, but we see that we also have this bilinear term here. So that prevents us from applying linear theory um, so far. And uh, our proposed, yeah, <coughs> proposed uh, strategy to handle that is to restrict ourselves to a region which is ellipsoidal in this lifted state. So we, for example, the simple norm bound, no, simple norm bound can be any other ellipsoidal region as well. Um, but for simplicity, let's assume it's a, no, it's a, it's a norm bound. And um, we then want to design a, a controller which stabilizes a certain region, so the safe operating region we've talked about. And um, to do so, we basically view this phi head of x in this bilinear term as an uncertainty. So such that we have uh, uncertainty times input, um, which has no bilinearity uh, anymore, but we can basically use it as a, uh, in, a in a robust control fashion. Um, so we have this true approximation uncertainty error proportionally bounded and this artificial in, uh, uncertainty introduced here. And since this is of course not uncertain, we want to exploit this uncertainty here is measurable um, because, I mean, we have access to, we can uh, <coughs> induce it because phi head of x is, is, um, is known and x can just be substituted. And that, that leads us to a so-called full information feedback controller in robust control where we parameterize this the controller not only linearly in phi head of x but also um, we add an, an additional term basically capturing the bilinear term. So we have phi head of x times mu of x and if we, uh, if we solve that for mu of x we get a nonlinear parameterization but notably we can apply linear robust control theory um, to actually um, derive suitable gains k and kw um, so we get linear methods for nonlinear controller parameterization um, which is quite useful. The guarantees itself look, at the fo uh, look as follows, so I skipped some details, but we again need some, um, some tolerance uh, for the, the, the sampling approximation uh, quality. We have the constants from the proportional error bounds, and then the goal is to find a matrix P corresponding to a Lyapunov function, um, and K, KW parameterizing our controller such that some LMIs are satisfied. I didn't show them here, you'll, you'll find it in the paper, um, but importantly, one LMI basically ensures the Lyapunov decay, such that we know that the Lyapunov function decays to zero. And the other one ensures that we are invariant in our ellipsoidal region we've seen before, such that we um, have a sound description of our, of our problem and this introduced uncertainty description, so to say. If we find those quantities, we know that there's an amount of data um, and the sampling rate such that if we um, satisfy them, this controller, which is now the same as before, but, uh, but solved from U of X, with this rational dependence here uh, on phi head of x exponentially stabilizes the nonlinear system. For all initial conditions inside this, this region here, which is a Lyapunov sublevel set and needs to be contained in this ellipsoidal region we've seen before. So um, we basically solve two LMIs to get a nonlinear controller um, parameterization for our true system. And here, really, the main ingredient are the proportional error bounds. It, which vanish at, at zero, such that we um, have yeah, an exact description <coughs> of our equilibrium, so to say. It's a semi-definite program in terms of uh, linear matrix inequalities. Um, the closed loop guarantees are derived with only state trajectory data, so the pairs, no derivative data, and we get uh, a relation between the constants, so the amount of data can be actually computed um, based on uh, this amount of data sampling rate and the uh, um, guaranteed certainty we want to achieve. So we get, so to say, end-to-end -end guarantees for the linear system based on the measured data. How does this look like in numerical examples? Uh, first of all, we look in this uh, Kupman invariant nonlinear system, you probably all know, uh, where we, if we choose a lifting function like that, the system is rendered Kupman invariant, 
Uh, so we get an exact representation that the projection error would be zero, or is zero. Um, we, we sample some data from the compact region here. Uh, for Europe to zero, Europe to one. Um, discretize the system and then apply our, our method uh, with the controller design. And here we see the safe operating region is depicted in gray. And if we look at closed loop trajectories with, uh, for, for different initial conditions, we see that we converge to the origin under our controller design. Um, we also compared this to, I would, see, I would say, the naive standard approach, uh, which would be learning a linear surrogate model via EDMDC and then apply a linear <coughs> modality for later. Um, where we see that also here, um, this would also work. I mean, we, could, we, we have not compared performance in detail, um, but there might be some differences. But uh, anyway, so here, EDMDC and LPR would work also. The only question is why doing all this other stuff we have presented. Uh, we've looked also in another example, uh, which I want to show here. So the inverted pendulum, which is also a common benchmark example for nonlinear data to control. Um, we choose also a simple lifting function, so only uh, a sign function at, um, additionally to the, so that's of course phi hat, so we also have this one additionally and our little function. Um, anyway, so we do the sign function, we sample data, um, and here to also show some kind of practical usability, we also added some noise, so we assume imperfect measurements, so our successor state is perturbed by some noise, so only small noise, but anyway. Um, we applied our controller and uh, we got again some, some uh, region for, under which we can guarantee that our controller safely stabilizes the system. But here now, if we do the same for EDMDC and LQR, um, we see that um, we are not converging to the origin and also depending on where we start, we end up at different points. Also not the stable equilibrium just hanging downwards, but some other controlled equilibrium, so not equal to zero, not U equal to zero. Um, which is not the, the, the wanted behavior. And of course, if you tune the LQR, you also can convert to the origin, but you're not guaranteed to. So here, you have really have a benefit on having this certificate. All right, so to wrap up, um, the Koopman Operator Theory Framework allowed us to formulate a data driven controller design based on only um, state victory data. We came up with a binary surrogate model with the proportional error bounds which were crucial to come up with closed loop guarantees um, for an unknown nonlinear system. Of course, um, that's only a first step. So um, we also want to exploit other controller schemes for the, the bilinear surrogate model because approximating the bilinearity via an uncertainty is kind of conservative, of course. Um, so we want to investigate that. Um, one could combine the, the safe EDMD uncertainty region with MPC, where we use that, for example, as a terminal, terminal region and therefore enhance the region of attraction and uh, performance. Um, the projection error so far was assumed to have this proportional bound, but that needs, of course, also a more rigorous investigation, and also um, thereby how to choose the dictionary, um, also maybe in the, in, the, in the connection to noisy data and stuff, um, needs, to be, needs to have more um, analysis. So there's still interesting things to do, um, and uh, with that, I'm at the end, so thanks for your attention, and I'm yeah, happy to discuss in the following discussion.